Hi guys, so you might remember that I said that I was going to have um, kind of a special altar space while I'm with my parents. I'm really lucky in that they were, my dad was doing up this shed anyway. Um, the outside was already here but the inside was just really a shell that hadn't been insulated or anything. So he's been spending the last while um, decorating. So this is going to be my new kind of altar room, kind of studio, kind of place. Um, so I think I'm going to put the altar on this wall and then there's going to be a chair and um, a kind of writing desk over there. So yeah, I'm really excited. Um, we've got it pretty much ready to go so we're going to be bringing in some of the furniture now and I'll be setting up my altar either today or tomorrow in here so um, yeah I'm incredibly fortunate to be able to have this space um, I'm really used to having complete privacy while doing ritual um, which is probably you know a bit of a luxury compared to most of you perhaps that if you know if you live with other people in the house that they're going to be around while you're doing ritual but I'm not used to that at all and um, it would have been very difficult for me to be doing ritual upstairs in my parents house while they're there. I mean you know if I had to do it I would have done it but um, you know my dad was doing this place up anyway and he said you know for a couple of months they don't particularly need it. There are various reasons why he wanted to do it up. He's just been meaning to for years. Um, and yeah it's a handy place to put some of my furniture as well <laughs> um, which I am not going to be able to fit in the house. So with about a day, maybe two days to go, uh, most of my stuff is now back in my parents' house and this room is starting to take a bit of shape. Um, the chair in front of you, well actually the cushion cover is missing on it, so that's why it looks a bit um, a bit funny, but um, yeah that's where the chair is going to be. I think my altar is going to go here and that's where the writing desk is living. I'm really happy with how it's, how it's going so far. Um, it's just... It's going to be a lovely little hidey hole <laughs> for, to keep me sane and to keep my parents sane while we're cohabiting for uh, the next four months. So I'm speaking to you now from my new sacred space. I just finished setting up the altar. Um, I kind of did it on a whim. I hadn't planned necessarily on doing it tonight or whatever, but um, yesterday was my last day in the flat, which was quite emotional actually. Um, my last night there, I was just on my own um, in you know a, an extremely bare apartment because basically all of my stuff was out by then and. Um, I had a, a weird kind of goodbye to the place and then the next morning I got up and said my goodbye because I knew when I came back later that you know I'd been doing the handover with the landlord and that didn't feel like the time to be saying goodbye to the place so I said my goodbye in the morning and went out and got my ear pierced. Um, I already had my earlobes pierced but I got another piercing on my left ear um, as far back on the earlobe as it would go basically and yeah it was a very busy kind of emotional day i um i met one of my closest friends who also happens to be my cousin and yeah i went back in did the handover with the landlords and came home had a bit of champagne <laughs> um and then today i just basically finished tidying away the re the rest of my stuff um i'd i'd kind of finished doing most of that before but i've i've kind of got a handle now on all my stuff and i just decided this evening because i was finished everything I was planning on doing for the day, I thought I'd come out here and actually set up an altar. So it's different from the last time you saw it. Oh, just to get an idea of space, um, I'm sitting now with my back to the wall opposite um, the altar. It's it's a very small little um, shed really. Um, so I can just, just about get the altar into, sh into frame if I sit with my back against the, the, the opposite wall, which is pretty handy. Um, so yeah, it's it's changed since um, the last time you've seen it. 
which you might or might not, not notice, depending on how much attention you pay to my altars, I've moved the main kind of altar to God or Goddess or Cosmos up to the top shelf, which was the Morrigan's altar, because I felt like, as you can see from the bottom, which is the Morrigan's altar, she needed more space. She was majorly outgrowing her little um, shelf there at the top and she needed more space. She wanted more space. Um, I've reinstalled the plate because I'm kind of loath to bring out any paper artwork out here of, of my own or anyone else for that matter because I'm not sure how damp, um, Ireland is a very damp kind of humid country um, and I'm not sure how damp it's going to be although it is insulated so I was a bit afraid. I will try and see what what effect the place is going to have on paper but I didn't want to ruin the painting, the, the drawing, the let's say, oil pastels um, picture that I did for her. So I've reinstalled the plate for the moment but I might try to see if I can find um, some artwork that I prefer but I do love this. Um, so all the usual stuff is still on there. You know I might zoom in at the end and just show you things in more detail. Um, and then in the middle where the kind of main altar used to be is now an altar for Odin. This is very much a work in progress. Um, because I'm only just starting to work with him, I don't know what our relationship is going to be yet, if you know what I mean. I don't know what he's going to need and that kind of thing. But um, I do have a, a system now with the Morrigan a system, <laughs> a practice, I suppose, where I offer her um, some herbs. I burn her some herbs pretty much every evening. I've just done that now to kind of welcome her to this new space. Um, for Odin, I don't think I'm going to be giving him offerings, like physical offerings, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to draw him a card. And I felt that the Shaman's Oracle was a really good deck for him, so I'm going to bring that out here to the shed. For some reason, I'm not too worried about that one getting a bit worn and torn or a bit bendy if it gets a bit damp because, you know, it's... Um, it's a widely available deck. I can always buy a second one if it gets kind of a bit wrecked. Um, I was thinking of bringing the Wild Unknown out and kind of giving him offerings every evening and I was thinking, no, I, I just wouldn't be able to risk um, my Wild Unknown getting warped. So I think that's what I'm going to be doing for him. Um, so as you can see, the kind of the main focus at the moment on my altar space really is on the Morrigan and Odin. I've no idea how long I'm going to be working with Odin, if he is going to turn out to be a sort of patron god or not, um, but I'm just feeling very called to create a proper working space for him, um, or a proper devotional space for him at this time, and just see where that goes. Um, the Morrigan has been a part of my life for um, over 10 years, or longer really, so um, I don't see her g going anywhere. Um, but that is kind of where I'm at at the moment, and weirdly it's not so much because I'm working more with personified deity, but actually that I've been feeling more connected to uh, to God as a kind of, um, I suppose as the all, but as, as a potentially conscious, greater form of consciousness beyond the universe, which I talked about, I think in the last video or in a recent, no, in two videos ago. Um, and I'm finding that she, he, <laughs> I tend to, I tend to refer to God as she. But basically, um, I've been finding her God that is as a general concept. Um, that any direct imagery needs to be quite simple. Um, and so hence the paired back altar at the top. But then I'm, I'm very interested in the idea of um, personified deities as being sort of lenses through which to address God because my understanding of God is sort of that I can't really address her directly, that she won't necessarily hear me, but that through communing with deities, which I basically just believe are archetypes, but that's... Maybe I will make another updated video on my ideas about deities. Not that it's changed hugely and I did make a video at one point, so maybe I'll link that below if I can find it. But um, yeah, I think I'm going to be focusing a lot on working with personified deity as a means of connecting with divinity. But then I'm also going to be focusing a lot on just pure meditation as a means of connecting to the divine. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave it there because my battery is actually about to go. Just before I go, a quick shot of the Morrigan altar. Sorry that there's a bit of a glare on the plate in the background. Um, you might notice that my blue calcite has made it onto the Morrigan's altar. Oh, there's a stray candle there. I just noticed that. <laughs> I need to move that. Um, that might seem like a strange 
um, association, but it just suddenly struck me as being so right because the blue calcite for me has been a lot about opening up the throat chakra and um, communicating and, and stuff like that, which has been relevant in my working with the Morrigan recently. Um, the rest of it is pretty familiar stuff and the altar cloth is new, which again, I might show you that in more detail at um, a later date. 